Good afternoon. Today, at the Urban Forum, we are holding a discussion on the city media. And every participant of this discussion had or still has uh, some involvement with the city media. Well, we no longer have it. We, the participants, let me introduce those who are here. Ilya Krasilchik, recently, until recently, he was the chief editor of Afisha magazine. Now he is the publisher of publication Medusa. Philippe Zetko, in the near past, uh, the big city, Bolshoi Gorod uh, magazine editor, and now he's the chief editor of the Arzamas project. My name is Yuri Saprikin. I used to work in Afisha for many years. Now I am the editing director of Moscow Times Publishing House. So um, only I still am involved in some city affairs, you know. Let us start. Today, I took part in the session about city branding, and the moderator there asked me, Yuri, could you please tell me how the people who are dealing with branding, with creating the image of the city, how can they use the media? And I th thought, you know, 10 years ago, when we all started in this profession, this question would seem, you know, very strange. Or because in our media, at least, as we thought, we were not we were not feeling you know being used. We were the ones who would use other organizations of uh, you know our uh, ca uh, our uh, characters, and it it were it was us who created the image of the city, and not some you know branding agencies specifically hired for this purpose. Tell me. If we think about the, po the po point in time when we were dealing with the city media, how did you understand their missions and how do you see it now? What changed? Why it is now possible about to discuss uh, that media, you know, needs to be used to, to uh, get across some kind of message? Uh, okay, let let me start. It's really interesting. Because uh, since the time when we were doing this, if, we are, if we're trying to compare what was going on six, seven years ago and what is going on now, it's very strange to be, you know, veterans here, war veterans. Let's try and compare, though. The, at that time, the Moscow government, on the one hand, and the media, on the other, there was not such a problem, you know, that we didn't need to cooperate when we never, our paths never crossed because, you know, Lushkov's administration and the media that would describe the city were, you know, living on different planets, different world, never talking to each other because we were building one city while they were building another one. And th there was not much common ground between us. What happens now is very peculiar because the city has really transformed and the people, the people, however, are quite the same, the people who are doing this, but the city is now speaking the language, the same language that we wanted to talk and did talk. And in the end, it turned out that the language that we and you, Yuri, you know, you dedicated a long time to construct this kind of language. It, you know, it was taken over by the other side. And it seemed for a while that there are no sides of the conflict, you know, that it seemed for a while that we are fighting for the same cause, you know, because just, you know, fighting for the better city, you know. But later, various processes have shown that we're doing we're fighting different wars we're doing different things not only in terms of the city but in you know general positions and, and stances on various issues and it turned out that the media are very different and media and the and the government cannot go hand in hand it doesn't work this way 
But what the city does, the city needs media because it's about, you know, producing meaning, about changing the image, about shifting the reputation. What needs to be done is to explain to the people what is going on. And it turned out that we still lack a common language. And on the one hand, there can be this idea of exploitation or it's kind of a complicated issue because it's interesting to look uh, to look at the city uh, to look at the city and trying to and seeing that it is very hard to talk one single language. There are very rarely occasions for real dialogue, and it's a great problem. I would like to underline two important things. I, I thought right now that this conversation about the city media is very, um, you know, uh, is very. It shows our time, because you know what happened, what uh, existed. You know, a number of magazines about radios that were functioning at that time. We can we can still be discussing those, but you know, we shouldn't rather. At that time, they were not considered, those media outlets, radio channels, were not considered as a tool of influence. But it, you know, it seems that we are getting back to the same old story on the new hist uh, historic sh uh, shift. We both, uh, Yuri and I, we both uh, come from the Afisha. We have uh, bread in the Afisha magazine. But there are still some things that I need, that I want to say out loud. The uh, image of the city that we dreamt about and that is now being fulfilled into reality partly, the image is about you know, a city that makes a great impression, that provides great experience, not produces coal, steel, or metal, but rather produces uh, life quality and life experience for the residents something about uh, being full of events and emotions. And that period when we talked uh, the same language, it was when the Department of Culture and Kup under Kapkov was functional, was operational. Well, it's not a big secret. At that time, we thought that this notion of the city was becoming true, was becoming reality, on the st and even on the state, or at least municipal level. Philip. The big city, Bolshoi Gorod outlet, uh, had a different perspective, always, right? Well, yes and no. Because what Ilya has just said, I kind of agree. And I think that it was a brief history of, of relation between media and the city of Moscow. That is how I would describe it as well. We had a different perspective because we, were, we had a different uh, idea of ourselves, of the media of uh, what is the role of media in this uh, relationship. We were very curious, uh, and we are still very curious, to look at how to build those relationships uh, in order for them to, the, to be bilateral, to, for, for, for them to be a two, not a one-way street, you know? Because the most interesting, at least for me personally, in the city is the environment. The city and the media can both participate in construction of this environment. And the Bolshoi Gorod outlet used various tools to talk about this goddamn environment. But the key issue that I mentioned already, we, you know, we tend to talk very abstractly about some city. Well, we are living in a very specific city of Moscow in 2016 with a very specific parliament, with a very specific uh, news agenda. And it all kind of resembles, uh, you know, a uh, debate of dreamers, a conversation between dreamers. Well, it all used to be to look like, you know, this dreamers society. And all the big cities, media, not only in Moscow, uh, they are relevant because of this dream that they express, that myth, that history, that story that they tell. I already gave this example today that the Exile magazine in 1996 had one myth of the Moscow city as this uh, world capital of easy money and easy sex, that you can 
you know, escape from the cage of your um, American or British uh, moderate life, uh, you know, come here and uh, everything is uh, accepted, you can do whatever. That would be a kind of a Klondike. But in 2000s, the myth was different. Afisha's myth was about the city that dreams about having the normal bourgeois infrastructure. And we indeed are very happy with having IKEA, and we do want to have uh, multiplexes uh, or uh, bike rentals, uh, you know, what everyone has. This myth of the Bolshoi uh, Gorod, big city outlet, is an image of the city as a community of uh, very proactive people who care, who are ready to take responsibility for what goes around them goes on, and uh, that was the value of this myth. The villages, another magazine myth, is uh, the uh, story, you know, about people who uh, who know what to do and are very happy to see that their uh, advice is taken. But I should rather say also that those recipes, those myths, they are no longer functional. You turn on the radio, you catch uh, a wave, and you hear the same music, but no one really cares anymore. And it's very interesting indeed, because you know, all the publications that we used to know as urban, uh, they've changed. Something happened to all of them. And right now we see a wonderful picture. We see that the city monopolized the whole informational urban agenda. and. Uh, in many cases, it happens because there is nothing to say. There is much more to say about Moscow than about the whole of Russia. Uh, well, you can't say that it's not said, actually. Well, it is said, but it's not said in media. People, yes, are discussing it, but somewhere, somewhere else. And I believe that this is what happened. You were very right to say that every media has its own idea. And there used to be many medias who tell, who, who used to tell about city, but they had, your, you know, their own ideas. But when the window of opportunities appeared, uh, a number of people went to, you know, change the city, and another part of them stopped doing what they used to do. And well, what we're having right now, people who used to be journalists became a part of that, more or less dependent. But well, they're now a part of it. And the rest of them just stopped writing about that. And we see a huge challenge, because people who could professionally tell about things happening around them, and there is a lot of happening, and I can't really remember, you know, any other time that had so many various processes happening in the city, but everyone who could tell about it are working for the city and the rest of people are not professionals in this sphere, but they have a very clear view of what is happening with, this, with the city. And for, for them, this is very often a challenge. And the majority of those who can explain what's happening is not working there or just are silent. And this is a problem. I don't want to sound, you know, offensive because I do respect my colleagues who who work in you know in all of these resources, but what the problem actually is? Well, there is like Moscow 24, 360 TV channel, Moslenta, like a billion of various resources uh, that bring the news to people and inform Moscovites about everything that's happening in the city. This is kind of uh, you know. Uh, a translator, these resources that translate the the voice of the power. So what's the problem? Why isn't it persuasive? Why doesn't it look persuasive? And why this huge media, you know, engine cannot really cope with negative emotions that sometimes appear, that pe negative feelings that people have about, you know, some changes in the city. They can't even explain this to people. Well, it's a rhetorical question. I believe the work has to be done on a different level. It never happens that journalists work. Well, these are different professions. All of this media, and please, uh, no offense intended, all the media are working on the creation of a positive image of the Moscow administration. This is their goal, which is kind of not about journalism. 
Yeah, but well, people who work on TV channel, they they manage to do that. They create a positive image of federal power, and well, they do create a positive image of it. Well, we're not that far from Kremlin, you know. Beware. Yeah, indeed. Well, they, there is a lot of important stuff, like an image of the enemy. But, well, it won't, it's not possible on the level of the urban agenda. And it's not about usage of media. It's not about the creation of image. It's about the the openness of the conversation and the explanation of what is really happening. To explain what's happening, you have to ask uncomfortable questions. Yeah, they cut off my microphone, right? Yeah, it happens automatically. Now, next thing they're going to do, they will turn off the light and cut off water supply, right? I don't have any water at home, by the way. They've cut mine already. Let's discuss this. These are urban problems, real ones. Yeah, I, let me just add. So it was you who caught me. I believe the question contains the answer. There is no media that offers a dream. There is no media that offers some new language, descriptive language for what's happening around us. Because for a long period of time, We've seen the situation when something is happening in the city, but there is no history. The time is not moving. Well, the, the time started moving at the end of 2011. Well, politically speaking, it happened a little bit earlier, but still. And when right now it's time to tell about the history, but there is no descriptive language for this new history. I almost said there is a, a huge number, but well, there is a, some number of the, you know, publications that work on that, but they are not creating the myth. They tell the news. Well, there is, there are no groups of people, for, target groups of people for them. Well, these are work for everyone, and well, that means for no one. There is often the problem of uh, inventing some, you know, drastically different dream. Oh, well, it's difficult to talk about Moscow as of European city. Well, let's talk about Moscow, but let's make it. We can't talk about it, but let's make the city Bishkek. It, it, it's not really relevant to a dream. I've never been there, and please, again, no offense intended, but when you're talking about the European dream city, you always face the administration that is trying to realize this dream. And well, you, it, it becomes difficult for you to talk about this dream. Because when, when you know they're rebuilding your street, the dreamy part of it becomes not that evident. When it's always, when achieving the dream is always relevant to some discomfort, it's a different question. Or otherwise, we have to move away from this dream, but well, we'll then focus on some uh, state problems. In my dream, Moscow is a city of freedom, city of uh, you know, life, and here we have more global problems. Talking about dreams and, uh, well, you know, a real image of 2016, I still think that it exists. I work on English-speaking publication, and, well, I, I see how Moscow is described in English-speaking media. I see that it exists. It's the city, the capital of an enormous and unpredictable country that can, at any given moment, this country could do anything and could really do a lot of harm to its Western partners. And this view of this city, these optics of the city is also possible. This is the city of skyscrapers. This is city of Kremlin. This is city of, you know, Victory Parade. Maria Zakharova is brand manager of this Moscow, for example. And I believe that for a domestic market, in the domestic market, there is a huge number of fans of this, uh, well, you know, image of the city, but well, 
it's not quite clear why shall we, you know, rebuild roads in this city. I don't really get this brand well. Well, the image of skyscrapers and Victory Parade does not have anything to do with the city. It's a good image for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, because this is the institution that works for peace. But for people who live in the city, it's not relevant at all. Everything that we can call the part of the uh, dream city is different. Well, please, let's be honest. The, uh, you know, millions of people are truly proud of, you know, these parades. And in 2016, there is even more. There are even more of these people that there used to be. I think that this is a dream for people who perceive Moscow as a capital, as a capital that one can visit, that one can come and have a look at the Victory Parade. I believe this image works for peace and for you know other cities, but this doesn't work for people who, uh, like for people who live in the city. Please visit the. Vorobyovy Hills, the 9th of May, you'll see how many Moscovites come there to, you know, scream hooray during the fireworks. And these are locals. Yeah, it's not about the, it's a dream about the country, and this is a different topic, and I think it, it doesn't have anything to do with the dream about the city. Let's, well, really switch from the federal or international agenda. Let's go back. You posted on Facebook a very popular uh, note in which you in which you said why is it impossible to explain the rebuilding of roads and uh, it's not because there is something wrong with media but can you explain how should you do that in well in ideal world within the urban management logics it's everything's okay because all the Moscow media environment uh, is basically filled with solemn relations that in a couple of months so, so many kilometers of new roads will be built and those who are not happy about that exist only somewhere deep in Facebook and are not heard but still there is some tension you know people are not happy and we cannot ignore that so uh, what shall we do? I, I can't really be the one who explain who, who who tell you, you know, how to live. But well, I'll try to do that. And um, you know, in this, when we have long-term problems, uh, very old problems, it's everyone's fault in a sense. On the one hand, we have uh, the authorities who do not abstract authorities, uh, but those are, it's not abstract. Those are real people in various departments. Uh, who have, uh, you know, different reputations and different rendition. We could, we shouldn't be generalizing like that. But the task is to explain. Well, it's not about it. Rather, there are many notions. Uh, you know, city brand, city image, uh, city for the people. You know, make it greener, etc. But the notion is not the solution. It's only an idea. But, you know, when the issue is really solved, it turns out uh, what, that, you know, explaining it's about, you know, sending a press release, uh, working with uh, familiar bloggers, uh, you know, working pro 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 with the outlets who are loyal to the authorities, well, the majority of them being loyal to it. And so what we have is a pure press release, it's a pure marketing that is badly done, poorly done. Because even the loyal outlets, they, you know, may be not informed that there will be a huge green head in the center of the city because, you know, no one told anyone that this was going to happen. Because just, you know, because in the information was not correctly spread and the chaos is, was not unorganized, unmanaged. And the result is that people every time are, you know, in, it's like a declaration of war without declaration of war. 
but this idea of the city for the people, this is you know, the authorities' idea, is quite problematic because uh, this making the city for the people it goes on without having the people in mind, and people do not get any comfort. They not their life does not become any more convenient, and you know they are not even getting responses to their questions. Kapkov, Sergei Kapkov was mentioned. We cannot all, no, not always, you know, always work with the positive precedent. But this was this one was very positive because he responded to people. He held debates with uh, people who uh, did, wouldn't agree with him. You, well, that's what we need to do in a way. One should be transparent. One should be uh, in a constant dialogue with uh, with the people. And not in terms of, you know, municipal, how, I don't know how those structures are called, you know, municipal councils or, you know, but to be in a real dialogue. It, it, well, you have to advocate for your cause, for your ideas if you have those. But otherwise we have this uh, situation with demolition of, uh, uh, the demolition of those unauthorized structures. The problem really is um, about freedom. The city created by the Moscow authorities, it's the image, it's the image of a free city, of a, free, of a city that lives for the people. But the reality proves otherwise, and that is why it's so hard to believe this story. Sorry for being, you know, not very clear. Well, the point is not about explaining what exactly you're doing or what exactly is going on. Kapkov, what he really did well was not to explain but to fight back when you would accuse him with, you know, unpleasant questions. But and for this his possibility of fighting back you started you would you would start to respect him. Because you know explaining it goes on and on and on. But it's a monologue or, you know, a very dialogue, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, about saying niceties to the mayor. Well, that's not, there's not much credibility in this. It's, you know, quite a silicon, quite, you know, a magazine uh, glamorous picture that, you know, it really shows that it's not that true, you know. Well, say something bad, please do. Well, I don't have fa a Facebook account. I don't understand half of the words that you say. And I think that it's a very strange accusation. There is a number of individuals who, for various reasons, want or have possibilities to change something in the city. And let me remind you, we are living in a city where the city Duma and the, oh, well, the federal Duma is uh, sitting, you know. Well, it's all same old business. Well, you are saying, well, the, the beautiful things are being said about the city being for the people, but we are under-informed because, you know, saying this free individual and Moscow in the same sentence, those two words, those are qu it, it's quite problematic. Well, what would... There is such an exaggeration, and what I don't understand is the role of the media. What can media do? Media can ask, well, why nothing is explained to us? That is how you see the role of the media. No, no, not really. It's not about explanations. What I think about the media is that they should inform people about what is really happening and identify real problems and do it in a very hard, very strong way because the problems are n very numerous. They involve corruption in many cases. And the role of the government of the authority here, if we, the media, describe the problems of the city, you know, we are talking about the city because since we are at the urban forum, but that could be any other scale. But, well, the problem is identified. The problem should not be ignored. And those media that say it should not be silenced, well, 
the role of the media, I think, is always about making something unknown well known, and there's no other way except asking those unpleasant questions or being, you know, an equal part of the dialogue. There is no other way. You want what you want to say is that journalists, uh, uh, well, are not being taken seriously not being taken as equals and as an equal party to the conversation. You've heard this recent story about uh, RBK journalist who uh, sent an SMS to the press secretary uh, of uh, the governor and the press, uh, and he uh, answered him with an SMS. Uh, so should this, he, th there is an RBK journalist writing us, so what should we do? Answer them to tell uh, them to F off? Uh, and you see that this this stupid idea was uh, because they under the situation is explained because that they understood that there will be many unpleasant questions asked. Sometimes we confuse the journalist's work with the marketologist's works. Work those are two different professions, and in the urban environment. Sometimes a journalist becomes a marketologist who needs to, you know, sell and ex explain and sell the actions of, of the authorities. But while this not is really his task, so that here we would all agree, wouldn't we? Please tell me. I suddenly remember that uh, the topic was rather about the new media, not the city media. From the technological standpoint. Uh, and the you know channels of information. How is it really different from what we had ten years ago? We are trying you know to negotiate with the with with the mayor's office uh, to take RBK as an equal. But well, you know this is a some in a sense this is a pointless effort. Why? Well, because in your phone you have a new world with, you know, uh, notifications uh, from Telegram channels, from Medusa. Well, why, why this press card individual who needs to be treated equally? Well, let, let me respond. Oh, what a nice questions you ask. Well, you know the answers. Well, you, we needed. We would rather have a moderator because you know I would like to answer my own questions as well. You can do that. The new forums and the old, they change nothing in how the job is uh, structured. It does not influence the well, what we say and how we say it. If it's RBK journalists, well, it's if it's only about RBK, there is nothing to be written in Telegram channels, right? So the information has to be found, and then it can be spread with everything like we post our personal opinion on Facebook and the same works for Telegram if you would do journalist investigation in Telegram that will be cool but I doubt, doubt it I won't do that but I'm subscribed to a number of channels of RBK journalists or snack.com and what they do write quite interesting stuff there uh, that they want uh, that they don't have any opportunity to publish in their quite free, you know, uh, media. Uh, just recently, we've discussed uh, quite, you know, uh, an interesting issue of the of a belt uh, that was on Nikita Bilich, Bilich when she was arrested. Probably that's uh, people seriously discussed whether that meant something or not. Philip, please wake up. You say that you're not working in media right now, but that is not true. I'm sorry. Uh, the word journal is even written, or the word magazine is even written on the main page of Artemis. Do you perceive this as a work that um, changes something right here, right now? Or it's like during stagnation period, like you're, work, you're writing for yourself, only hoping that the future generations will use it sometime, or future generations will be different from us. I mean, during the other historical curve, their life will be happier. What's the you know influence horizon of Arzamas project? It's quite easy. We are 
telling about some stuff that we believe is interesting and that we think could be interesting for someone else. Uh, and as we're dealing with experts, be it experts in the sphere of um, mm, history of Petrograd before revolution or the medieval, you know, uh, courts, in scientific world is much slower. And people who we are, you know, interviewing today, on who, or the people who write text for us today. They produce the material that will live much longer than, you know, urban medias. Uh, Pavel Astahov uh, just announced about his resignation. Just I, I, I had a notification from Medusa. So we're not working with Pavel Astahov. We work with people who are more competent in their field. And well, the expert is still expert, be it today or in five years. And I believe that if we go back to this urban media, I guess it would be more interesting for us to read from some media that have their own perception of the city. I don't know, some very aggressive, uh, terrible media that really prohibits uh, to change, you know, windows from the wooden windows to, you know, plastic windows, or some media dedicated to, you know, butterflies in Eastern District, I don't know, or in the Central District. That will be interesting. You've always been interested in butterflies. I've known you for a long time. Yeah, you could, you guys could make a team. If you have any questions, please, uh, let's go to questions, because, well, we don't have that much time. Please take the mic, because I can't interpret you without the microphone. Yeah, I will repeat the question, okay? So you work in the press service of a city organization, because, well, it's quite relevant what organization you're working in. And when you invite people to press conferences, you have only state TV channels. Uh, well, it's not only about press conferences, you know. Well, because press conference is a chance to yeah, record official information and, well, get your job done. This is not, that does not work every time. And the level of interest towards the problem is quite important. And, well, it's important where exactly you work, because, well, there, are, there is stuff that is not interesting for some media. And well, another thing is that um, I'm not saying that every media is working equally well. This is unfortunately not true. And I think that the problems of urban media is, uh, you know, a bilateral process, not only the state process. I believe that's, that's my idea. I would like to add that On a certain level, media in 2016 could be very lazy and not curious at all. That's true. But on the other hand, the journalist's work uh, is not 100% similar to yours. It's quite vice versa. The journalist's job is to find out what you're trying to hide from him and to write about what you don't want him to write about. I believe that, yes, well, it's necessary to visit some events, but from the 
you know, good media point of view, this is a minor part of the job that we're doing. This is the, just the tip of the iceberg. And, well, I could probably use this event to get some insight or to, you know, uh, dig up some, you know, some secret information after the fourth cocktail that he will take and will be ready to tell me everything that I need. Just a very brief comment. You will, we, you won't find anything interesting on press conferences. I'm sorry, it's not a personal thing. I, no offense intended, really. Uh, in Afisha, for example, we had a very conscious, uh, you know, idea of not going to press conferences. Yeah, because that wasn't our field of work. Well, when you're ready to tell you, I'm not talking about you personally, but well, you, absolutely. When journalist is coming with an unpleasant question, you will never answer it. You will answer it anonymously or off the record, or you will not answer it at all. Well, because the problem is that when the journalist would like to un uh, to to ask a question, it will be always unpleasant and it will never receive any answer. And that's a total Russian problem because there is a huge number of anonymous sources. In some in Vedomosti, there was a brilliant, there was a brilliant state, uh, statement that the anonymous source rejected to give any comment. And this is basically describing the situation that is having. No one can answer any question. Uh, once in Afisha, we were making a profile of one person uh, who will remain anonymous. So that was an anonymous profile. And the, the situation was as follows. People who were saying good stuff about this person also would like to remain anonymous. And no one was willing to tell anything. So press conferences does not solve this. Press conference are not anonymous. That's why no one comes. Thank you. Well, no. I, all right. I, re, I would like to remain silent. Well, but off the record, I tell you that the press conference format in 2016 is set by press conferences of Vladimir Putin. Uh, you probably are coming to press conferences not to get an answer to your questions, but to express your own opinion. You are coming there with understanding that you will not receive any good answer, probably somewhere, somehow, through the third party who would like to remain anonymous. That's how it works. Yes, please. At the very beginning, it's all that uh, every urban media created a certain urban myth. And it was quite, uh, you know, uh, quite good bourgeois myth. But when the there was the this ruble falling, the wages of Moscovites were cut by half and well, the, their opportunities, buying opportunities also. And the traditional media consumer now is having a different picture of the world. And right now, they're interested in more practical issues. And they're looking for answers, not in Afisha, I mean, what restaurant to visit. They go to some official social sites where they could find some answers. I'm afraid he's now coming to Google. No, I mean data.mos.ru, like where you can buy strawberries or like uh, rent a bike or whatever. There is Gosuslugi website where you uh, apply. I, 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 I like this mos.ru site, uh, but I never perceived it as media because the only thing I get from it is some, you know, bills to pay. Yeah, well, but some of them are dedicated to the education, like you can uh, apply for kindergarten or for school or anything. No, wait, that's not. Let me comment. I would like to say something good. I believe that in terms of e-services, Serbian really managed to achieve 
brilliant results. I mean, Moscow is one of the best. One of Moscow is in the top of the cities. I mean, from the point of view of e-resources, everything works through internet. But uh, you are confusing media and services. The fact that you can apply for kindergarten online, or I don't know, park a car, or buy a ticket to movies. That's really good, but you, it's very important, but this is not media, and it will never be media. But, well, I mean that people's interests are now not in the entertainment or myth field. They switch to practical field, like how can I actually solve some problem, or how can I actually uh, I don't know, find some practical information. And this is not really media, you're right. I don't agree with you. I applied to kindergarten when Lushkov was here. I, I was doing that when this was not in fashion. I was worried about that even before crisis and all the practical issues as well. And I agree with you indeed. Right now, it's, um, it's easier, like... 100 times easier than it was ever before. So my question is whether you think it's possible to make some media that will give real answers to real practical questions. Please do not understand the word myth literally, the image. Can I please, can I please answer that? I do not agree with you at all. I agree with Yuri that Ghost Sosluge State Services portal is very comfortable. And I, as a resident of the city of Riga, we don't have what Moscow has in the state services. It's incredible. And only I imagined a media that publishes your photo with uh, uh, with. Uh, you know, mentioning the Rifa, uh, the Riga services, uh, uh, Ilya is uh, very sad, you know. Well, well, media is not about myths, uh, not only, though many, me many state outlets are doing exclusively this, but media should cater for what people want and need. But the idea of media, you know, expla uh, explaining and, and helping, it happens everywhere. Because, for example, when you open the afisha, it's to do, uh, it's to make a choice. It has to be. It, first of all, it had to be useful, and only then it was about the myth. And originally, uh, two thirds of the magazine was occupied by the uh, guidebook, and also f we also think about the 50 pages of uh, um, timetables, you know, and um, not only timetables. I mean, cinema, theaters, etc. You know, now we're having the biggest numbers of people uh, visit going to restaurants. You need to book uh, a seat and a week in, adv in advance. So these scenarios of people behavior, when we worked in the Afisha, it was different. Despite of the, regardless the crisis, uh, and in Lushkov era, we didn't have it neither. So. The, it's hard to compete with the Gosuslogi state services. They're out of uh, you know, competition. They are the leaders. But you cannot consume information via this platform. It's very useful and convenient. But, uh, the, uh, but normally, uh, every text there would start with the phrase, in accordance with the federal law, etc., etc. Well, so those are two different jobs, two different functions. Well, I don't see any problem in creating a beautiful, useful, convenient uh, media. While, you know, Afisha was about the timetables uh, of the theaters uh, and cinema. That came first, and only that came. Then came the myth, and so we are talking about combining uh, a higher idea about the convenience uh, and the myth all together. I really think that in 2016 we are seeing a great time, energy, passion, money. Um, uh, allocated to food, you know, to restaurants. It's incompatible, unprecedented. For the last six, seven years, Moscow 
uh, continually is, you know, uh, baking, frying, having restaurant weeks, gastronomical festivals uh, each time. Uh, it's not an exaggeration. E in every issue, we have to five uh, new restaurant uh, assessments, and we have to pick and choose because there are always more than five restaurants open, opened every new week. So if uh, I was uh, working for the state. I would come up to the uh, some of the federal, you know, federal media, describing, saying that uh, Moscow is the new capital of food, or Moscow is the new capital of the world restaurant business. So talking about the Brexit. Uh, you know, you can also talk about Brexit, mentioning a new Moscow restaurant. But I really doubt that in the mayor's office someone will, you know, uh, understand my flight of fantasy. Moscow is a city that never not eats, that always eats. I'm sorry, I just can't stop myself. Uh, my question is about myths and also about negative stereotypes. Yesterday, there was a conference about commu about communication between Russia and the post CIA, uh, post so post USSR, sorry, countries. And we were discussing negative stereotypes, uh, if the situation is improving or not. You were mentioning that sometimes the journalists just do not have the information. Well, we are mostly discussing Moscow, domestic Moscow issue, because when we are shifting to international arena here, this will be, you know, a very shaky ground, because, uh, you know, the problem is that someone might not want to talk to RBK is, you know, it's a kindergarten. Unfortunately, there's something wrong with the mic, and the interpreters cannot hear the question. Sorry for not providing you the translation. Well, I'm hesitating. Probably, no, not. I, there was a uh, an, an outlet, Yacht. It still exists. For a year, they were building a negative stereotype of about everything that the Moscow municipality does. They had a very coherent agenda, you know, as uh, with the windows, as I have said, uh, old windows. They were unhappy with everything that Sebanyan does, everything that is done under him. They were shaping a negative stereotype. So how did it end, you will, might ask? It uh, happened that the, the owner uh, of uh, that the owner of this uh, the owner of this outlet fired everyone who worked because uh, you know he is friends with some of the uh, representatives or members of the city administration so and those ties those bonds are much more important to him than you know this abstract media outlet and the uh, when we Well, it's very really hard to uh, it's very really hard to answer your question. You know, because you know, we might say that after the epatage comes the incarceration. That's the kind of a joke, you know, that we are not kind of laughing about, really. I don't really understand what go what happens with timing. I think we still have four more minutes. I, su I uh, suggest we occupy this room and never go out and hold the session until tomorrow. Well, seriously, we have time for one more question. I would like to know if there are things that you're proud of, not, I mean, not text something on the larger scale, I mean, ideologically, what you really achieved to change in Moscow, in Russia, while you are working? Well, I will refrain from answering this question. 
No, I don't know. I wouldn't know how to. Do you really feel that you achieved at least something, cha to change at least something? Well, probably 2016 is not the best year to answer questions like that. Because, well, of course, we all have a sense that we kind of, that we are kind of, I wouldn't say defeated, but exhausted, rather. That our mission that we lived in for many years is exhausted. And, you know, being incapable doing, of doing something else, I don't know. And all the achievements that I could, you know, try to own, they look ridiculous. Well, okay, we, we created a nice festival in the city that is unlike others, and we have reasons to believe that some of the recipes uh, that the Moscow parks were, under which the Moscow parks and city festivities were reorganized, we believe that they were borrowed from our festival. Indirectly, we affected this new cheerful environment that was created uh, and, you know, in reproducing the Gorky Park. I believe that some more time should pass for us to be really able to be sincerely proud of all of that. That, that was a different time, a different epoch. Everything has changed. Well, what did we change? We might not know. We do not know. The second thing, it's very easy to be proud when you see results. But, you know, it's not by chance that we no longer work in the city media. It's, well, it's very hard to be proud of anything at this point in time. Well, probably together and sometimes, you know, even thanks to us, there was a new class that emerged, a new residence category emerged with their own uh, new ideals, ideas of, of you know, what is beautiful and what is good, but it, this class is also kind of depressed right now, I would say, and has no longer this class identity. Well, I really, really don't know. It's hard to say. Well, could you ask one more joyful question? Because we are being very melancholic and philosophic. Well, what, go, what goes next is on, will be only worse. Unfortunately, there is something wrong with the mic, so the question cannot be translated. It appears to me that it's the other way around. The political journalism is feeling much better than the city journalism right now. Well, yes, there are many problems. It's very hard to do this, but we have so many news, and uh, oh, and so it's a, it's a great territory for for work. While in the city media, you know, there is much less to do. And we were trying to ex discuss why is it like that. I'm an optimist. And I, you know, think that it's very easy with the political, uh, political outlets. It's a system of communicated vessels. When you, you know, shut down one, another one emerges. Pavel Ostachov said something, and then he resigned. And it, this can be discussed for a week. And regardless of the RBK situation, it will still be discussed everywhere. But a uh, bike track. It's not a piece of news. Five years ago it would be, but now, you know, it's like in the Soviet Union. You uh, put on the Vremya, and they tell you the news, but there is nothing new in the news. Another 73 railroad from Tinda to Berkakita was constructed by the brigade uh, under Ostapov. And in two days they will... Uh, open another 50 kilometers. The same thing with the bike tracks. It's like talking the, about, you know, coal extraction or crops and harvests. I think in 2007, 2008, it, we were 
you could find people who were totally uninterested in foreign politics, in world politics, in the society. Those topics were absolutely irrelevant to them. But I think now, maybe I have changed in some way and, and my uh, and the circle of people around me have changed, but I don't think so. There are no such people anymore. The politics uh, affects us much more than it used to, and it's very hard to ignore that, to ignore the, uh, the world global situation in politics. I think that everyone, in, to some extent, cares uh, about the politics, but while the you know, more close to earth, more relevant city matters are being ignored. Well, you know, there is no strict division between the international, between politics and city life. There was a heat material by the village about the individual who lived three years uh, in uh, Arctic in the polar region, totally alone. So this is not this piece of news is not political, is not city. It's well, it's polar, right? There is. Well, thank you, thank you so much, and goodbye.